Hey everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer here with Practical Machinist. Uh, today we're looking at uh, single point threading on a CNC lathe. Uh, I got a little uh, example part here that our students do, uh, just a practice piece. Uh, in this particular part, it's a one inch diameter piece of bar stock and they're just doing some practicing, uh, cutting a half inch 20 thread on the end of this part. Uh, it's a 2A classification. Uh, and it goes back uh, threaded portion one inch back in the z-axis on this particular part So we're going to go through some of the steps uh, Specifications uh, for this part and how to program this on a CNC lathe uh, Here's our finished part right here uh, Some of the things we're going to need for the programming aspect of course We need a good scientific calculator and always our machinery's handbook This is going to help us find all of our specifications for the thread and some uh, g-code help also So let's look so to start off, we're going to go to our machinery's handbook here and find some of the uh, specifications we're going to need to make this part. So uh, in my book here, I'm looking at table three in our threading uh, series here, and it goes over standard series uh, thread combinations for unified screw threads. Over on the uh, left side here, I'm going to arrow down to where I find my specific thread. So I'm looking at a half inch 20 thread and then 2A classification. So here's the column for the specific thread that we're cutting. Now to start off with, the first two columns here is gonna be our major diameter upper and lower limits. So this is gonna be the diameter that we're gonna turn this part to before we place threads on it. So we're looking between 4987 and 4906. So that's gonna be our major diameter of the thread. And then the next column over is our pitch diameters. This is our upper and low, lower limits for pitch diameters. And this is what we're actually going to measure to control the fit of the thread. So from 0.4662 to 0.4619. That's our upper and lower limits that controls our fit. Now it does have an additional column here for minor diameter. Uh, we're going to calculate our own for this specific application. So let's go to the board and look at our specs. So I went over on the board here all of our specifications for one half dash 20 2A threads. Uh, first of all, we went our major diameter. Of course, this came out of our machinery handbook, upper and lower limits. Uh, ideally, we want to shoot for the middle on that, so I figured out the middle to 0.4946, and that's what I'm going to shoot for on my actual part. Uh, the next is our pitch diameter. Of course, upper and lower limits, that came out of our machinery handbook also. So when we get to the point of measuring our threads, that'll be our limits for that. Uh, the next is the pitch. Uh, pitch is 50 thousandths. Of course, we take one divided by the threads per inch, that'll give us our pitch. And this is a single lead thread, so the lead is going to be equal to the pitch. That's going to factor in on our feed rate for our uh, program. The next one down is our single thread depth. This is going to be needed for our programming aspect. Uh, I got 0 0.0324. Now that number comes from a formula here, uh, taking the sine of 60 degrees, that is the angle of our thread, so the sine of 60 degrees times the pitch times 75%. Now 75% comes from this illustration here. The sine of 60 is a perfect sharp cornered uh, triangle here. Now of course on unified threads we're going to have a small flat at the top and bottom of the thread. So we're utilizing 75% thread engagement on this particular thread, so that's where that comes in. To simplify it, we can take 0.6495 times the pitch. That's basically 75% of the sine of 60 degrees. So that's the formula to use, single thread depth. And then finally is our minor diameter. Now in our machinery's handbook, it had a minor diameter that may differ from what we calculate here. Uh, based off from our single thread depth. So our minor diameter, this value is going to factor into our uh, can cycle for cutting threads. Basically what I did was I took our major diameter that I figured up here, the middle of the limits, minus two times my single thread depth. So I took 0.4946 minus two times 0.0324 and I got a value of 0.4298 so this is going to get placed into our CAN cycle in the program. So let's go ahead and flip around we're going to look at our g-code that we're going to use for this uh, cutting the threads. So before we actually write our program uh, we're going to look at the CAN cycle that we're going to use and I'm going to use a multiple repetitive cycle and uh, we're going to be using just a single point threading tool here 
uh, just a standard uh, industry uh, 60 degree threading tool for our part. Uh, going back to our machinery's handbook, there's a lot of good information here on uh, G-code and CAN cycles. Uh, on our particular machine, we have a Fanuc 21i control. So that's going to be utilizing for multiple repetitive threading a G76 command. There are two different formats for the Fanuc control. One is a single line, that's for your older controls. For the machine that we're using, it's going to be a two line CAN cycle. So there's two lines of G76 accompanied by letter addresses. It does a very good uh, uh, description in the machinery's handbook here. We'll go ahead and lay it out on the board and I'll go through step by step with you. So on the board here, I got two lines of G76 code in our following letter addresses. Looks a little overwhelming at first. I'm going to break this down uh, each letter address. So the first line of the code, G76, it's going to have a P letter address. Now there is six digits in that P letter address, and it's broken down two, two, and two. So behind the P letter address, the first two digits is going to be the number of finish cuts that we want to make. This all depends on the material, but for our specific part here, I'm going to do one finish cut, so zero, 01. The next two digits is going to be the number of leads for gradual pullout. So when it gets to the end of the thread, it's going to gradually pull out. Now, if we wanted no pullout, if we're going into an undercut or a groove, that would be zero, 00. For this instance, I'm going to go 20. That's going to be two times the lead gradual pullout, so the last two threads. And then the last two digits, of course, is going to be the angle of our thread, 60. So P0120, 60, with no decimal points added to that. The next letter address in the first line is the Q. And this is going to be our minimal cut depth. As this tool gets deeper and deeper in the thread, it's going to be progressively getting less and less depth of cut. So this is going to limit that depth of cut. And for this instance, I'm just going 4,000. So it has to be four continuous digits with no decimal. So I got Q0040. That's going to be a minimal cut depth of four thousandths for this particular part. And then finally is our finish amount. So when it gets to the very last pass, it's going to take a finish cut. And uh, this one here does require a decimal point, And that is the R letter address. So for finish amount, uh, I'm just going to have two thousandths. So that's going to be R. 0 0.0020 in our code. Now we go down to our second line, G76. So two consecutive lines, it's gonna start off with a G76. And this is our last pass in the X axis. So it's gonna be X accompanied by a value. That's where we got our minor diameter on the previous uh, board. So that's gonna be X.4298, minor diameter. The next one is the end of our thread. Now on our blueprint, our threads went back one inch in the z-axis. Uh, I'm using the far left side of my insert as the reference point of my insert, so I have to go half of the insert past that one inch. So I'm going back z negative 1.125. I have a quarter inch wide insert. The next one, this is an optional one. This is an R value. This is going to be if we're cutting taper threads. Uh, it's basically the difference on the radius from start to end on the taper. Uh, we're going to disregard that because we're cutting straight threads, so I'm going to eliminate it from this line of code. The next one is another P letter address, and this is going to designate our single thread depth. And this does not have any decimal points in it, and it has to be a four digit uh, value. So our single thread depth from the previous screen was 32 and 4 tenths, so this will be P. 0324. That's how we'll list our single thread depth. And then finally, our first pass depth. We're going to flip the board around and we're going to go over our first pass depth calculation. So let's talk a little bit about our first pass depth, that letter address. Uh, with this can cycle, it's going to take multiple passes to produce this thread. Um, every pass it takes through there consecutively gets less and less amount. That results in less tool pressure as it gets deeper into the thread, preventing chatter, chatter and anything like that. So the very first pass is going to determine how many passes it makes through. And that's basically up to the programmer to determine. Uh, if you want 10 passes versus 5 passes, a lot of times that's going to depend on the type of material it is, the type of setup, are we between centers or are we nice and short and rigid to the chuck. Um, for this example here in this part, we're going to take six passes through this thread. So in order to calculate that first pass, to have it come out to equal six consecutive passes to finish the thread, we're going to use this formula here. 
And this is basically the single thread depth divided by the square root of the number of passes we want to take. So in our example here, uh, our half 20 threads, our single thread depth was 0 0.0324. We determined by our setup and material, we want to make six passes through this thread. So we plugged that into this formula, 0 0.0324 divided by the square root of six passes. I get 0 0.0132. So my first pass depth, 0 0.0132. Three, two. We'll add that to our can cycle on the other side of the board. So back to our second line of can cycle, going back to our Q, which was our first pass depth, I entered in that value Q0132. And again, there is no decimal point on that letter address. The final letter address is F, and that's going to be our feed rate. That does require a decimal point, and that is essentially the lead of the thread, how much advances per revolution or feed per revolution. On our particular part, it's a single lead, so the lead is equal to the pitch, 50 thousandths per revolution. So let's go ahead and look at the G-code for this particular part. So on the board here, I got our G-code for this particular part. Uh, we're gonna be running this on one of our uh, tool room lays here at the, at the college. It has a Fanuc 21i control, so maybe some differences here in the code. Starting off with our program number for our half inch 22A threads. Uh, first line of the code, G92S1500. This is going to specify maximum spindle speed. Uh, now, most of your turning centers, that'll be a G50 command, and these particular machines use a G92 for maximum spindle speed. Uh, next line, I'm sending it to a secondary reference point. This machine has a little bit larger bed on it, so it has a primary and a secondary reference point for a tool change position. So I'm just going to my G0, G30, U0, W0 uh, tool change position. And then I call up tool one, offset one, which is my single point threading tool. From there, I'll go ahead and get my spindle running. RPM mode, I'll go 500 RPM clockwise direction. And then I move to uh, basically a start point from my thread. I move to a diameter of X.75. Now every pass that it makes through the threads, it's always gonna retract back to that diameter before it uh, retracts back to the face of the part. So I wanna make sure that is definitely higher than my thread diameter. Um, so I go to X.75. My Z position, I'm starting out at Z positive 0.2, 200 thousandths in front of the part. I always like to start at least two to three times the lead of the thread in front of the part so it gives the machine two to three revolutions to synchronize before it starts cutting threads. So we're plenty far enough there at Z.2. And then I turn my flood coolant down. And then of course my can cycle, G76 with our P, Q, and R letter address that we described. The second line, G76, X, Z, P, Q, and feed rate, uh, second line can cycle. From there, the machine does all the rest. Takes its first pass, takes six cuts through that thread, it always comes back exactly where it starts when it's finished with the can cycle, so it will end right back at X.75 Z2, and then finally send it back to its secondary reference point. And then I end the program and rewind. So let's go ahead and we'll get this loaded on the machine and we'll run through some threads. So we're at the machine here. You can see this is our uh, Fanuc 21i series control. Uh, just a small little tool room uh, laid that we have here. I got the program loaded. Now I went ahead and pre-machined our uh, bar stack to begin with. So it's already turned down to our major diameter uh, that we figured out of the machinery's handbook. Uh, I got the program ready to go. Let's go ahead and hit cycle start and we'll cut some threads. So there we went through, uh, we cut our threads on our part. Uh, now we're up to the point where we're going to measure our threads. Of course, going back to that pitch diameters that we found in our machinery's handbook. Uh, and we'll use whatever type of uh, measuring device we want on this particular part. Uh, if you're not quite sure, we made a video a few months back on how to measure threads with a couple of different methods. Be sure to check that out. Uh, if you get any other question or comments or some other tips on single point threading, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.